Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to the Brain and Mind lecture series. Uh, this series is an interesting uh, extension of our programming activities and I I as, as we call it a series because we look at various topics which is central to thinking, brain functions, etc. And uh, our speaker, Dr. Shamshir Dwevedi, is an expert in demystifying uh, you know, hard subjects which look, which looks, uh, you know, unapproachable. He has a way of making it accessible to people like me, who is not an expert in this field. So, uh, 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 I find it very engaging, and I'm sure some of you are finding it extremely interesting, and uh, sharing an interesting uh, uh, thing with you. In the next uh, edition, he'll be talking about the chemistry of love. So I'm already looking forward to it, and I'm sure there will be a big audience uh, for it. So, <laughs> oh yes, yes. May I now invite uh, Dr. Dwayedi to take this forward? Thank you, Sachin, for the kind words. And uh, the only fear I have is that once I bring down love to the level of chemistry it will get so demystified yes. that the romance of the whole experience will go away. So many of you, but the good part is that those who are in pain uh, because of heartbreak, they might feel better. <laughs> because they would understand this chemical locha. <laughs> no need to get too much disturbed about it. Heavens are not going to fall. So, and Wordsworth and Keat would turn in their graves that what this chap is doing to our literature. As far as the history of brain studies is concerned, it is in last 1000 years, we started uh, this journey from a point, the mankind started his journey from a point where in the Greek history, uh, heart was considered the center of uh, uh, thinking and the brain was considered the radiator of the body. It was just to cool the bo body. That is what the concept was in the Greek or uh, Roman times. But over a period of time, we came to the conclusion that this is the area where most of the thinking abilities and functional abilities of bodies are body, the voluntary part of our activity. And now later on we knew that even the involuntary activities are controlled by the brain. Now, unfortunately, between 1935, not 35, but between 1940 and 1945, when Lord, the world was going through the experience of World War II, uh, in Germany, Nazis did, Nazis did lot of experiment with human brain and live living people were used for it. So tinkering with brain became a taboo. After the World War II was over, they, the uh, allied countries, uh, they met and uh, they decided that this is an area uh, particularly psychosurgery was considered a taboo because Germans started uh, using psychosurgery for uh, treating as well as trying to experiment with live people what happens when one part of the brain is cut. So this kind of experiments were done on living human beings and that is why it went into disrepute. If any of you has seen one flew over the cuckoo's nest there was one gentleman there who had his frontal lobectomy done for his psychiatric ailment and people thought that he's absolutely emotionless and inert, akinetic, but he's the man who helped the main actor at the end. So, so that frontal lobectomy was used as a treatment for violent uh, psychiatric patients to make them subdued. All that was abandoned in 50s and 50s, 60s. Anybody who spoke of doing anything, any tinkering with the brain, it, he was considered a criminal, blasphemous. So everything stopped. So now what happened? That 
a patient it, it or the interest arose when when did the interest arose see is a very vast topic i will try to cover as much as i can but to more like a story i want to take it up forward so there was this gentleman who had lot of tremors and these tremors were very debilitating and he has been suffering from these tremors all his life and one day he had a minor stroke so off when he had this minor stroke suddenly the tremors stopped on that side which got paralyzed the tremors there were no tremors and uh, the paralysis since it was very mild he recovered from the paralysis there was only mild weakness on one side but that side he was cured of the tremors of that side the other side was still having tremors but the side which paralyzed got cured so this was the time when it was reported that how it happened they tried to figure it out and in those days there were no ct and mris and imagine the kind of dedication the scientists had and the kind of dedication that the patients had that they would wait for the patient to die and then do an autopsy they would keep a track tell the family members say see we want to do an autopsy when he dies to find out what happened in the brain because of which the tremor stopped and the family members were also cooperative enough that they would inform the doctor when the patient would die and then they would do so they found out that this patient had a stroke in an area of brain which is known as the thalamus